Um, the question that I pose in this, the IQ defined bow sight, the first laser range finding bow sight from 2018, I believe it was, is it still good in 2020 for the price? Before I go and talk about this site, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is I wanted to thank everybody that subscribed. We've hit over 100, almost 100 subscribers in the past month. I love continuing to growing this channel. So uh, as you will, please hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel and that just helps me grow this thing. So if you like watching reviews, outdoor reviews, uh, and this goes for my channel and any other channel out there. If you like, like the content that we provide, don't forget to hit those buttons because that's how we get recognized by uh, all these different algorithms and uh, get noticed. Uh, also, if you haven't already, follow me on uh, BitChute and Library as well. I'm posting over there. Uh, you can actually put little tips in Library and you can uh, pay to watch the videos and things like that. Um, you don't have to pay money, but you can actually just pay by watching other videos, grabbing some credits there on Library, and you can actually donate those uh, to anybody you watch a video for. So again, great platforms, and I uh, just want to give you the opportunity to do that. Please, thank you for subscribing, guys, and uh, let's continue on with the review. What's going on Predators? It's Travis from Apex Predator Outdoors. Today we're going to be uh, talking about a product that I decided to try out. I found an incredible steal of a deal for this thing and I decided to give it a try and uh, put it through its ringer and see if it can be my new replacement bow sight. Uh, so as I've been using for a while now, for almost a year and a half I guess, a year, um, I have been using the Fast Eddy XL. This is a dovetail. Uh, single pin moving site, or sorry, it's a two pin technically moving site. Um, and I've been using this and I've had pretty good success with it. But one thing I've been finding lately is that in that heat of the moment, I've been forgetting to adjust my range and things like that. And the Fast Eddie would be really good for long range shooting because it has so much flexibility. But I decided that, you know, my main goal is to put meat on the table. And so therefore I'd be better suited with having a multi pin site. So without going too far into the details of the difference between a multi-pin and a single pin sliding sight, uh, well, some of the main differences are is that with the single pin sight, you get a much cleaner reticle. Uh, so your sight picture is gonna be a lot cleaner, a lot, free, a lot more free of clutter. Uh, but again, you're gonna have to move that sight and you're gonna have to adjust it whenever you're arranging the animal. From my experience, um, this has been kind of a difficult thing to do because animals, uh, especially if they're moving away from you or towards you, can change their range very quickly. And unless you pre-scout, you know exactly where all the uh, different yardages are if you're hunting on familiar ground. Like if I'm hunting at the Doss Ranch, I know exactly you know, what 20 yards is, what 30 yards is. But if I'm hunting from a uh, public land or somewhere where I'm not familiar with everything 100%, uh, then finding that range can be a lot more difficult to do. The great thing about this site, this is the IQ Define. This is a uh, five pin laser range finding site. Okay, and so what it does is it's got that range finder, a very compact range finder built into it, and it can range up to a hundred yards. So obviously if you're using a bow, you're probably not gonna be shooting anything further than hundred yards. Uh, but anyways, it's great for up to hundred yards. So let's talk about some of the qualities of it. It is built very durably. Uh, it is built like a tank, I would even say. Everything is metal. 90% uh, of this thing or more is made out of metal other than like the rubber coverings and gaskets and things like that. Um, it is battery operated, so you have to check your local regulations because some states allow you to hunt with uh, battery operated equipment. Here in Texas, you can use literally anything. I can hunt with a laser aimer on my bow and that is not a problem, which this site does have a built-in laser on it. So basically what the laser is for is not necessarily to point and shoot, but it's actually to make sure that you're ranging your animal at the right distance or your target at the right distance. So it's got a built-in laser. Uh, the, it is a button activated uh, range finder here. So I push this button here and it turns a little screen on uh, here inside the reticle that I can see and it constantly ranges and it's gonna tell me the distance of wherever that laser is pointing, okay? Uh, the site housing itself is very great. It's a five pin. Uh, it's not too cluttered. It's got a pretty big aperture, which is a good thing. I really like that because it allows you more sight picture there. But again, having five pins in there, it is 
Uh, definitely a little bit more crowded than like say my Fast Eddy. The Fast Eddy does have a much smaller aperture here, okay? But uh, it doesn't, it only has a single pin in there. Now with the, the uh, IQ Define, it definitely has a much larger housing, but it does need that because it's got so many pins in there. So some of the great things about the site is that A, it combines, you know, or, or the first of all, is that it combines two things in one. You got a laser rangefinder and you have a bow sight mounted in one. So there's great. Um, the bad thing about that is it definitely is a little bit more heavy, but it is not too much heavier than my uh, Fast Eddy. This is a much uh, longer sight, has a lot of metal to it as well. The whole housing here and everything uh, is all made out of metal. So it is definitely, again, this is a tank. And in the hand, this feels almost identical. This Fast Eddy even almost feels a little bit heavier because the IQ Define is a lot more compact lengthwise here. And so it uh, kind of balances that weight a little bit better. But that's kind of what we've got with this site here is again, being more compact, it's a lot easier to balance uh, and it works really good. Um, the problem that comes with this site, by the way, so build quality are amazing. Um, the weight of it, not too bad. The functionality and the quality and the usability of the laser rangefinder, it works great. I've tested it around all over this area. I synced it with my uh, hunt maps and I checked it with, uh, sorry, with a uh, hunt stand and uh, to make sure that you know, with GPS measuring versus GPS, it is like almost 100% accurate there. Uh, might be a yard or two difference here or there, and that just could be, you know, trying to mark it on a map versus, you know, laser rangefinder. But it's really, really accurate, uh, almost spot on with my other rangefinder, which is uh, uh, another great rangefinder. But here's the thing. Setup on this is super confusing, and that's the main thing I want to tackle today by doing this video. I want you guys to know that setup on this is a lot more simple than it really comes out of the box so when you look at the directions that come out of the box it tells you okay this is a step by step by step by step here and this is how it's supposed to work the problem is is it doesn't always go like that and this is where a lot of people whenever this site first came out i believe in uh, the earlier mid 2018 or 2019 um, people were, were seeing this thing and they were very frustrated with it because they couldn't figure it out exactly, especially if you're setting it up at home. Uh, even some places going to bow shops, they're like, they don't want to mess with it. And so they're just kind of like leaving customers hanging. So the thing that you got to understand about this site is it is definitely more complex than your average bow site. Okay, obviously. But the thing that it's actually a little bit more deceptively simple. Okay, so let's go over the site itself. So right here on the side of this, You've got this big box. This is the laser rangefinder, okay? This is machined and it is set up on this site to be very accurate, right? But how do you know what you're pointing at? Is it pointing with your pins? Do you have to sync this with your pins? Uh, no, actually it's got this laser that's mounted on the bottom. And when I turn this laser on, I can see you shining the camera there. This laser, wherever that points, is where the rangefinder is going to be ranging. So, this is where a big part of the frustration in the setup comes up because setting the pins is just like setting any other site. Some people, whenever they're setting this up, they are going and they're setting their pins first and sighting it in, and then they're trying to set up the rangefinder. <clears throat> and excuse me, that was weird. <clears throat> Anyways, then they're trying to set up the rangefinder, and that is not the way to do it because if you set that the pins up first and then you go set up the rangefinder, everything is going to be off. Okay, so the first thing you got to do is you got to set this laser. You got to use the uh, included paper that they give you to help sight it in. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to require you uh, to set your 20 yard pin on a piece of the target. Uh, it's going to be a black dot. And then whenever you, the way it should be set up is that whenever your 20 yard pin is on that black dot, there is a white circle underneath it and your laser should be lined up perfectly with that. So in order to adjust it, in order to adjust the settings on it, what you have to do is you have to tune these screws here. These screws here are going to determine, um, you know, how the pitch of the uh, laser is. And so it's going to align these two things together so that whenever your laser rangefinder is on a specific uh, path or trajectory, you know, that that lines up with your reticle. And that's, that's the goal right there is you wanna make sure that your laser is inside your reticle, okay? So they say on there very specifically that they want you to 
tune it to where the uh, laser is about two inches short of your 20 yard pin, okay? And again, the purpose of that is to make sure that whenever you point that laser at a target and you're arranging with it, that it's going to match up to the target and it's going to range appropriately. The problem with that is you can mess with, with this thing like I did for over a day trying to get that spot on. So the problem I was having is that even with it at its lowest position, again, I would loosen this here set bolt, the mounting screw here, and I would loosen that. And then whenever I would put it down to even its lowest position, the laser was still shooting about six inches above where it needed to be. So this made a huge challenge for me trying to set it up because I was basically got to the point where no matter what I did or how creative I got with this thing, I could not get that laser on target, okay? And I was frustrated and I say, in my head I was thinking, this is why people were returning the site, this is why nobody bought this thing. And then I really thought about it and I thought about what is the purpose, why? Why am I doing this laser setup? And it's so that that laser again, points accurately to the target that is being ranged. Basically what I ended up having to do was once I realized I cannot get my laser and I cannot get that to line up with uh, the side end paper, what I ended up having to do was to just adjust the laser. Now, let me stop there and just say the Mac manufacturer, you know, Faradine Outdoors does not recommend doing this because what they say is that from the factory, the laser rangefinder and that laser the rangefinder and the laser are matched up so that they'd be perfect in line, okay? You just gotta go and make sure that at 20 yards, these two things line up. Adjustments, right on the bottom of this, there's a little screw here. You can see this little set screw sticking out right there, or sitting right there. Let me see if I can show you that better. Right there, and on the bottom right there. So that's what I had to adjust to adjust my laser. Again, it's not recommended from the factory to do this, but it worked out really well for me and still accurately measures the distance for me. By the way, this site normally is about $350 whenever you buy it brand new, but right now you can buy these things for $99 on eBay, which is a freaking steal. Even for, if it didn't have the laser range finder on it, this, you know, having a site that is built so good with such uh, good tolerances and such durability is, is gonna be a really good deal no matter what. Instead of the laser being about, you know, an inch and a half, two inches below the 20 yard pin, uh, it's actually right at my 20 yard pin. So I'm really close to it. Uh, my next thought was, was, okay, well, if I move this laser, how is that gonna affect my ranging? Uh, so with large targets, uh, basically what's happened is I tested it out and with large targets, uh, it's still accurate to the laser as far as I can see the laser. So at some point you get to the point where it's, unless you're hunting at night, it's almost hard to see the laser uh, during the daylight, okay? Um, what I ended up having to do was to point the laser at the ground in front of me and then follow that line straight up. Once I've got, I know that at 20 yards, it's on that, that pin there. I can adjust it a little bit to see the laser moving in my reticle there. So once I see it in there, again, I can point and push the trigger and I can have it range for me, okay? Anyways, I tested this out and after I figured this out, it, it saved a lot for me because again, I spent over a day fiddling with these screws and thinking of different ways to mount it so that I could get this to work. I tried the front mounting screws, I tried the back mounting screws, and nothing worked. Once I realized, okay, I can adjust this laser slightly, that opened it up, and now I've got everything set up. Uh, beyond, the, beyond that, once I got the laser rangefinder set up, the rest of it is just like setting up any site that you've ever used before. Okay. There were a little, a couple of quirks where basically with this site, I had to adjust the mounting holes so that instead of it being dead center, I had to adjust it to the right a little bit so that it lined up with my bow and my arrow and everything on there. Um, the downside to this was that it put the little screen that reads uh, the yardage off to the side a little bit. And so it kind of has to almost peek around my bow in order to see it. The fix for that for me was to go ahead and use the rear mounting holes instead. And that made it to where it pushed the sight a little bit further out from the riser. So I'm not having to peek around the riser uh, to see what my yardage is, okay? So it does have this uh, cord here that goes with it to a button. The button is what you use to activate the rangefinder, okay? 
Uh, they recommend mounting it on the side over here, but I found out if I mounted it on the side that it was not working out as well because it wasn't sticking as well. I've got a little groove in here. Uh, then the cord was getting in the way of the arrow. Uh, and so I just decided on the front was not the best way to do it. So I mounted it over here on the thumb side of the riser and this has worked out pretty well for me. So I can either, as I'm going to draw, I can use my thumb to push the button uh, or whenever I'm in the drawing process, I can use my middle finger and I can tap that button to start the ranging process. All right, so we're just gonna take a quick walk through the site here. This is the right side of the site. This is a right-handed model. Uh, and so I just wanna show you real quick what we're looking at here, okay? So this right here underneath is the laser unit. There's a push button turn on right over here in the back. Okay, so you just push that button and it turns the laser on. Uh, this right here is the uh, actual laser range finder here too. It's got in the front here, you'll be able to see whenever I turn this a little bit, it has two lenses in the front here. We'll go over that in a second. Uh, those are how it actually finds the range for you. Uh, this is the uh, windage, or sorry, the elevation adjustment. Uh, this is the windage knob up here. Okay, so basically what you do is you loosen these and that allows you to turn either this one for the uh, windage and this is for the elevation and they are micro adjustable. So you can see it has a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine around there. And that allows you to click, click, click and then adjust those different settings. And they work very well, very positive click, very good feedback. Back over here. Okay, so these right here, this is the left and the right or the forward and the rear uh, adjustments for the laser. So this is what you're going to turn with a, is a 1 8 uh, Allen wrench that you're gonna to use to turn these. And so the, the way to do this is if you need to adjust the laser left or right, then you're going to turn those accordingly, but you have to turn both of them, okay? So think about it this way. If I need to move the laser to the right, I'm going to turn the right one clockwise or we'll think of, we're gonna add time to it, right? If I'm taking, if I'm moving it to the right, then I'm going to take away from the left. So I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna take away time, I'm gonna move it counterclockwise. So again, if I need to move the laser to the right, I'm first going to adjust this counterclockwise so it loosens up this whole thing. So the left one will be going counterclockwise. I'll take time away from the left and I'll add that time to the right, okay? If I need to move the laser to the left, it will be the opposite. I'm gonna take time away from the right first and I'm gonna add that time to the left here, okay? And that's going to, and that's going to allow you to move the laser uh, position so that it's pointing more towards the right or towards the left as far as your riser is concerned. These right here are the mounting holes for your quiver. Uh, this right here is the button that turns on, it is a, uh, membrane button here that turns on the light. There's four positions on the light. There's off, there's brightness level one, two, three, and four. And so this is the button that you press right there to turn that on and off. This down here is the port. It has a cover on it, okay? But this is the port where you plug in your uh, button for the laser range finder, okay? So you plug it in down here. I just kind of have this looped around here and then we're back around and basically just to where it's out of the way. It's got a good, decent long cord on it. It has this kind of a, uh, what do you call this, a coil in it. And so that it, you know, does, it kind of takes up the slack automatically, which is a good thing. And uh, yeah, it works really well. Uh, so as far as the mounting holes go, you've got a couple of them. You've got the front ones here and then you've got the back ones. As I said earlier, the back, whenever I was using the front ones, this knob right here was hitting my riser and you can see there's a little spot there where the paint is missing because it was just barely clipping that riser enough that it was nicking some paint off of there. So uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, now we're talking about the back side of this. So you can see the pins lit up there. This is again the activation button for the laser. You can see how the laser is projected on the wall there. I've got a bright light shining on now so you can see even with the light off, the pins are nice and well lit up. They capture quite a bit of light, okay? So whenever we turn this on, I'm gonna hit the activation button, which is mounted on the side of my grip here. I push and hold it, okay? And then that turns this on and now it's gonna start ranging. So whenever I, it's like ready to go, I hit the button here and see that little arrow that appears down there. That means that it is 
right now searching for a range. Obviously I've got a few inches from the wall, so it's not gonna find anything, uh, but basically it's gonna synchronize to uh, that and it's gonna measure at a minimum of like four to seven yards. So basically from that four to seven yards, all the way out to 100 yards, it's gonna be incredibly accurate. And then I can see that while I'm drawing up, I can see exactly where it's ranging to and uh, see the battery power there. And I can see the distance at which it caught that range. All right, so now we are looking at the left side of the site. Okay, so this is, again, the laser right here. There's the housing. On top, you can see the clear uh, plastic, the acrylic or whatever this is, the plastic that covers the pins here, or sorry, the fibers for the pins. And this kind of is really nice because it allows it to be, uh, to see light and to be absorbed, the light to be absorbed, but uh, it protects it as well. So some of these, some other sites have this open here uh, and that might allow for dust and dirt to get in there and it can kind of over time make your pins a little bit more dim. But the fact this is covered by a clear plastic, I think is gonna help quite a bit. You can see the other side of the elevation adjustment here, okay? Uh, and then again, there's the port down here where the um, button activator plugs in. And just the other side of the mounting hole. This is how I routed my button. So I got it coming from uh, the side of the grip down here. You can see that. And it comes around through here, over the top, around. So you can see it's pretty long cord. But the good thing is, is that it's easy to get out of the way. Pretty, there's a couple, several different ways that you can route this thing to make sure it stays out of your way. So I'm gonna arrange it. So it is hard to see when the sun is hitting that. In fact, I can't read. It says about 26, 28 right there, but I can't read it at all. So I'm gonna step forward a little bit. See where this lands. Okay. There are some downfalls, and this is the point of the review where I get into the pros and cons of this particular site. Okay, so overall, IQ defined, here's things that I like. Uh, build quality is amazing. It's probably a lot better than some of the other uh, IQ sites that I've seen before in the past. It is built like a tank, and uh, it feels great on the bow. Uh, two, the balance is very good of the site. Unlike the Fast Eddie, where all the weight was forward, and it was very unbalanced feeling, although it was a great side, don't get me wrong. This one is very well balanced, even though it has that hanging off the rangefinder hanging off there. Overall, it still feels really balanced because of the all metal construction. Uh, the third thing is, is that everything is really tight. It does have micro windage and elevation adjustments or micro adjustments for the windage and elevation, which is a great feature. I love that. I think it's a necessity on any good quality site. Um, the housing itself looks great. It looks good through my peep site. Uh, the spacement of the uh, pins is great. Um, and overall, it's just a great bow sight. Like I could say I love the ability to be able to range accurately wherever I'm at. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to take a shot on an animal uh, over 40 yards. In most cases, I'm, I might, if I were like out west elk hunting and I get that shot on an elk that's never seen an archer before, that's a slow moving, much larger target then yeah, I'll take a 70 yard shot or something like that, maybe. Uh, but I definitely wanna get inside of that if I could. So the first downside to the site is the setup process, obviously, right? That's the big elephant in the room here, is trying to get that laser set up on my bow was just a pain in the ass. Just, just be straight with you, okay? On other people's bows, you probably won't have that same issue. It's not gonna be as much of an issue, I'd hope. Uh, but for my bow, for my bow, Particularly, it was definitely a pain in the ass. It's <laughs> just no, no holds barred here. Uh, two, there's a couple of machining things on there that were a little bit off. Uh, for instance, it says it's got uh, a, a toolless micro windage adjustments and windage and elevation adjustments. But from what I found, these things were impossible to move with my fingers. Like I, I was just scared I was gonna snap something if I worked too hard with it. 
Uh, and so the knobs on there definitely leave some something to be desired. So trying to loosen it up so that I can use the uh, elevation or windage changes is definitely very difficult, okay? So I'm gonna try to, I've just got a 3D printer. I'm getting started with that. I'm gonna see if I can, in the future, and y'all be looking for this video, I'm gonna see if I can 3D print some knobs that are a little bit longer that will actually go in there and allow me to get a little bit more leverage to adjust that. Um, but yeah, there's, other than that, those two things are, are, are kind of annoying. The fact that those knobs are just, they don't give you very much leverage to take them off. So I definitely do have to use a tool to unlock right now and adjust the windage and elevation. Uh, the third thing was is the position of that knob was actually where it was whenever I hit the, I was using the uh, forward mounting holes on there. The knob was actually hitting my riser and actually after repeatedly trying to adjust this, uh, it actually took some of the Cerakote off of my bow riser, which kind of, you know, frustrated me a little bit. And it was just because of the positioning of it, how it mounted with my bow, it was definitely making contact there and I'm not a big fan of that. Then I found that if I use the front mounting, or sorry, the rearward mounting holes, uh, it fixed the problem. It uses a CR2 type battery, which are expensive and not very common. So I went to three different stores near me to try to find a replacement for this battery. The good news is they last pretty long. It's a three volt CR2 battery. So they last a pretty long time, but that one battery is driving both the lights on the pins and is driving the uh, range finder. And so it's gotta, gotta be pretty heavy duty. The other thing is, is again, these are expensive. Each battery is about $10 a piece, so they're not cheap. So guys, as far as, as, far as sighting the site in, it worked great. There's no issues. I didn't have any problems sighting this thing in. Uh, so far, I've got the 20 and 30 yard pins set up and they are just spot on. Um, I use both my range finder and my laser range finder to check and make sure that uh, the, uh, the yardage is measured correctly and they were, so that's really great. But again, um, Great site for what you can get this thing for right now. I beg you to go check it out on eBay. Find a reputable seller to buy it from. Uh, for a hundred bucks or 120 bucks in some places, this is a steal of a deal for this site. Um, the question that I pose in this, the IQ defined bow site, the first laser range finding bow site from 2018, I believe it was. Is it still good in 2020 for the price? Yes, absolutely. For what you can get these for right now, I recommend you go and pick one up if you're looking for something like this. Try it out. But just, again, buyer beware. The setup process is frustrating. Be very careful with the site. So if you want to you know, return it or resell it on eBay or something like that, that you can still do that. Um, so again, guys, thanks for tuning in for this review. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching in the channel. I've had a great time doing these videos and I appreciate you liking and subscribing the videos because it helps me grow this channel and become another part of this outdoors community that I so much love. Um, for all my brothers and sisters out there that are suffering through these uh, unconstitutional lockdowns and things like that in different cities across the United States and across the world, I feel you. Um, we've, we've had to, a lot of these struggles, guys, and my heart goes out to you. Uh, my family has suffered a lot during this pandemic. You know, we've, uh, my wife has lost her job. She's lost her job twice because of this. Um, you know, we've had to struggle and to make things happen. Uh, and so it just really, every time I see somebody subscribe to the channel and like a video and comment, I love talking to you guys. Anytime I see a comment pop up on one of my videos, I'm jumping right in there. I'm going to comment on this for you. Um, so please continue that discussion, guys. Thanks for tuning into the channel here at Apex Predator Outdoors. And as always, guys, keep defying the odds.